Hello, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review. And today I'm going to be reviewing How to Give Readings for Magicians by Peter Antonio. But before we do that, can you please like and subscribe? Check out cardmagiccourse.com. That's my online card magic course where we have live sessions every week and there are hundreds of videos on all the moves you could ever want to know. It's sleight of hand for people who want to learn seriously from beginner to advanced uh, and learn from a pro. Remember that you're learning for someone who spent his life doing it, actually going out and, uh, and performing magic. So, uh, this is a, an important one to watch, I think. So just if you don't know who Peter Antonio is, uh, I reviewed a book by Anton. Uh, and I know he, I don't think you'll mind me saying this. So he, he publishes two books by Anton. And he's created this kind of thing. So when he does gigs and things like that, they can't then Google him and find his, his, his books on, um, uh, and buy his books on how he does his routines and, and how he comes up with his ideas, etc., etc., which I think is a really respectful thing to do. It kind of gives it, it sort of creates, it, 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 it maintains the mystique, so to speak. Um, but he does teach readings to lay people, but this time he's created this uh, a live session, uh, which he did uh, about a week or two ago, and the, we'll. Uh, I'll talk about why I'm reviewing it now because it isn't currently available but the point is there might be another one I presume I don't know but he, he did a thing for magicians and, and it was about how to use that to enhance your your mentalism and magic routines and this is really really important because if you're someone like me who is a magician who does mentalism or, or you're you're a pure mentalist uh, we can sometimes get the we can sometimes waste an opportunity, I think, and to really enhance a routine. So we, we do the usual stuff and we kind of we create theatre around the fact that we may be pretending to mind read and, and there might be a bit of tongue in cheek in that or whatever. But this is really it's not really about that. It's about what we can do to add sort of meat to the bones of that routine, which I say a lot, and, and, and give it coherence and do something that makes sense but also makes it more amazing. And by doing this, what he's done is he's, he's, he's teaching us the basics of how to give a, a routine, a cold reading routine. Uh, and and I, I misunderstood a little bit what cold reading was. Obviously, I knew what it was, and we know what cold reading is as magicians and mentalists and performers, but actually the difference between hot and cold reading, and actually what we do mostly as magicians, we don't cold read, we hot, and we hot read. And, and we put a, maybe a cold read around that, if you see what I mean. I'll, I'll, I'll explain in a sec. So what he does in this, he, he, like I said, it was a live three hour, just over three hours, uh, live workshop or, or, or course really, one off course in how to f learn the basics of how to give a reading. Uh, and then, as I say, use this in magic. So he uses tarot for this. And I was really interested in this and found myself getting drawn in and found myself actually buying a set of tarot cards, which I have no interest in kind of doing tarot readings. But at, uh, actually, it's such a valuable tool to learn how to do readings because there's so much you can you can look at something, improvise around it and well, not totally improvise. But but once you've got this way of teaching that he teaches, this concept or this way of reading that he teaches, you can then use this skill and use it in any other context. So for example, he, he, he gets the tarot out and he, he gives some examples on, on tarot readings and explains that this, this oracle, the tarot, can be replaced for whatever you want. Numerology, cartomancy, uh, mind reading, psychological presentations. But the point is he's saying that once you learn that, it's like you, you, you then, it's if you don't learn it, it's like learning a second deal without learning to deal properly, if you see what I mean. So whereas part of me was going, oh, I didn't want to learn tarot, within 10 minutes I was in and, and like I bought, what I did is I watched it in two halves. So I then bought the tarots, they came the next day and then I sort of went along with the with tarot in hand. And I learned a great deal, okay? The, and first of all, it's not about these readings aren't about fortune telling and pretending you can tell them exactly what's going on at their purest level. I know we do a little bit of that as, as the theatre in our in our magic shows, but in, when you're doing a, a reading, there's a, there's a deep respect for the audience member or the sitter in front of him, uh, which is also mirrored by the deep respect he has for those who he's teaching. There was never any feeling of, I'm going to teach you my stuff, aren't I clever? He, he connects with you the way he does on stage, and I've got a great respect for his stage work, is he connects with you as a student as he does 
players, um, his sitters and members of the audience. There's a huge respect there. And I think that, that not only did I learn the, the uh, methods here, but it also reminded me about the importance of that respect for our audience. Because if we have that, that's kind of half our work done. If they can relate to us, we can relate to them as human beings, then then we've kind of created that rapport on stage and it's so important we often forget that he talks about this a lot in his books as well um i'll put i will put all the links below and what that does it kind of undoes all that kind of nastiness or or that sort of ickiness we can feel around readings just pulling the wool over someone's eyes the exploiting of people there's none of that going on what he explains is that readings are just a way of, it's not like I've got some magic cards that are going to tell you what's going to happen in your life. It's just a way of looking at your life with a tool that can enable us to look at our life in a different way, to tell our story in a different way. And what it does is it, it gets rid of all our own biases. If we've got this tool that we can use, we're kind of, we're, we're kind of getting through all the biases and the opinions we may have and just telling a story based on the cards that are dealt. And I was fascinated by this. It reminded me of coaching, really. We're kind of, we're just looking at objectively what's going on and looking at it from a different angle. And if we can use something to leverage, le leverage, leverage, I never know, uh, that, then that helps. And, and straight away I could see why this could be useful for, for people, you know, not in a magic setting, just in a reading setting. And I really started to get that. And it started to become importantly something I wanted to learn. And I have learned. Obviously, I'm no good at it yet, but I understand that I can now use it. So anyway, he, he takes you through all of that. He breaks down what a reading is, the importance of, you know, fulfilling expectations, telling the, the sitter or the audience member what it is and what it isn't. These aren't magic cards that are going to read your fortune. Tells you what to avoid. Tells you how to deal with certain things, how to deal with certain questions. Uh, then breaks down the the reading how to give the reading in in bit by bit and gives you a brilliant he, he, he plays a genuine reading a 10 minute reading he does over the phone with someone obviously with permission which is fascinating to hear he also does things like okay give me an idea and i'll do a cold read now on it um i didn't know the difference between cold reading and hot reading which i I talked about earlier cold reading is where you have no information whatsoever hot reading is where you do have information and as i said before remember that you do have information as a magician a lot of the time so you can use that and, and it gives you this amazing thing you can do around it a story you can tell around it which can end up in something absolutely incredible or just end up being a really nice way to present it so it kind of takes the heat off that thing of well if I say something and I'm not right I'm going to look stupid I hope this makes sense I know it's kind of a I'm tr there was so much in it this was three hours and 20 minutes I only fin finished watching it last night but I hope you get an idea of, of basically what it is uh, and then he takes uh, questions which are obviously so important because they're genuine questions that people, it was a live live YouTube, so people were, were asking real questions in real time and he answered loads of those questions, which was useful because oftentimes they were questions that I was having as well. I'm really looking forward to taking this to to things like wiki tests because obviously you know you're not doing tarot but the tool you're using there is a word, so how can you use that word and create a real the sense of depth with that word before you actually, you know, just say, oh, the word is this and, and the other things you can do with wiki tests as well and book tests and everything. I think you can take this into loads of stuff you can do. He gives you an, a thing where he does a, a way of doing an invisible deck, which makes complete sense, which, which was a lovely presentation, which made it not feel like a magic trick. And I know a lot of mentalism does use cards and say it's not going to feel like a magic trick and you kind of go, it kind of does really. It, he, it, this was like, it felt like you know, he'd taken a card out, turned it round and on, based on information he had by looking at them and feeling them and reading them and all that kind of thing. And it just felt like a really different thing. Not necessarily that I would do that, but it gave me, again, something that I could transfer to other routines that I may, may do, which could change something to being a little trick. How did he do that to, well, you, you actually connected with me in some way. And it really is about that connection. I, I think this is a a really interesting thing to watch. Now, you can't watch it at the moment. That's one thing. Actually, it depends when you're watching this. I presume Peter is going to do this again because it seemed to be very successful. And, and I want him to be successful because he is not someone that... And, and I do know him. We're not best mates. We haven't hung out that much. You know, he, he, I asked him to come and perform at my 40th birthday party because I really love what he does. Um, but we haven't... We've met up, uh, you know, a handful of times and we connect with each other. But it, so it's not because of that, but it's because he is someone that doesn't shout from the ceilings what he's doing. He doesn't have the heft of a big organisation behind him. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. And I'm not saying he wouldn't 
wouldn't be up for that, but I'm saying he doesn't have that because he's someone that, that really sticks to the values of what he's doing. He, he won't make concessions. He won't do certain things that may get him the gigs. That's why he hasn't done the, the, the thing with the book and, and all that. So, and, he, and he won't sell out um, in any way. And I'm not saying that selling out is going with a big organisation at all. And, you know, we all want help where we can get it. But I want to be able to, to highlight and make you aware of someone that you may not be aware of so easily. So all of the stuff is going to be below. Please do read it and please check out his site because I think he's doing some really interesting things now. Peter is someone that's busy, probably too busy to do this kind of stuff out of lockdown and now we've got an opportunity, like I said, over three hours, and I'm sure this will happen again, of learning from someone who takes the stuff out and actually does it. Uh, so he, he's got a YouTube channel. I presume that's the best way to kind of follow what he's doing. Uh, so do check out his YouTube channel. Again, it'll all be uh, below and follow him on Twitter and social media. And that's where you'll find out about the, um, the next program. And that's how I found out about it. But there is stuff you can buy on his site as well. Uh, and I would recommend the, the Anton books, which I found really, really useful and inspiring. So I know it's a bit of a ramble, um, a bit all over the place, but that's, that's the way it is sometimes. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you, uh, if you have any questions, any comments at all, do put them below because I'm doing this new thing, comments on comments. So every week I'm going to, when I, when I can, uh, every week on Thursdays, uh, mostly I'm going to be talking live about the comments and answering a lot of your questions. So don't think I just ignore them. I do look at them. And if I can't answer them and I don't have time to answer them there, I will answer them on the video uh, if I can. So, uh, do, and do like, subscribe, like I said, check out carbmagiccourse.com again, support everybody, support big organizations, but support us uh, independents that are, that, are, that are creating the stuff on our own as well, because that would be great. And if you want to share this or share any of Peter's stuff or anybody that you respect, you know, always give them a hand. It's this, what it's all about at the moment. It's about helping each other. You know, we're in lockdown um, and all we've got really a lot of the time is each other connected um, through through online like we are so it's uh, it's great to be able to do it so take care have a great one thank you very much see you later